Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today what we're going to go through is how you can actually make a custom OpenAI MCP connector for deep research. And what that means is you can actually connect your custom data sources and use them in ChatGPT, and how we can actually set all that up. This is kind of a precursor to the ChatGPT apps, which I'm going to turn into a mini series. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing, I'm just going to kind of show you an example of one that I've already created, but we're going to kind of take a look at what this means. So OpenAI has basically made this ability to add sources. You have to enable this through your uh, developer section, but you can add custom connectors and you can see there's like a bunch of them that are predefined like Canva, Figma, Spotify that we saw like in their release demo. But you can also see that you can have uh, custom ones. So this is one that I built based on uh, a previous MCP that I have where you can go ahead and connect to it. So that is going to be part of a longer uh, demonstration, but we're going to go through how you can actually create one and how you can use Vercel to do it. They actually give you a really nice template. So let's kind of go through some of the, uh, the specifics for OpenAI. So what this is going to allow you to do is you're basically going to create an MCP server for ChatGPT that has API integrations. Now you're going to configure things like uh, the data source. So in this case, we're going to be looking at like a vector store um, and we need to create an MCP server. Now, a really important thing about uh, the deep research specifics of this is that you can only implement two tools. You can implement a search and you can implement a fetch and they have really specific requirements. So when we're building out this uh, deep, deep researcher tool that allows us to connect to different data sources, that would be our own, for instance, we're going to actually look at uh, uh, this. And we need to make sure that we follow these, these patterns. The other really cool thing is that you can, or it can accept text, image, and resource. So this is one of the really awesome things that I think is underutilized in MCP is that you can actually pull in images. I've actually done this before using NAN um, and I'll leave a link to the video in the description for that. But this is a great way to understand that you don't necessarily need to just send uh, text. You can send different types of uh, data. And then there's also the fetch tool, same kind of concept, little bit of difference with the metadata associated with it. So you can see right here for um, the result, but again, takes text, image, and resource. So we're going to look at how we can do a specific example. They have an example uh, that you can do on Replit. We're actually going to take a look at uh, Vercel um, since that's where I spend a lot of my time is in Next.js. So what's really interesting about this is in the MCP documentation of how you can actually deploy MCPs to Vercel, they already have a template. So in another previous video, I've kind of gone through the fact that Vercel actually has a uh, transport layer for a route specifically for MCP. And this latest template that I found, they actually have the ChatGPT Deep Researcher uh, compatible MCP. So that means out of the box, it's actually going to give us everything that we need. So quick refresher, when we're looking at MCPs, you know, we need to have the uh, git post uh, and delete as a handler. You can run it locally with the model context protocol. And then we're going to go ahead and configure this MCP uh via a url as opposed to doing something like a, a standard in standard out or even like a, you know an sse <clears throat> there are options to do authorization so in the example that i have uh, for mine you can actually connect through the uh, oauth principles with like the uh, twitter so this is going to give it a minute to spin up. All right. So now that my server actually spun up, it just like all it does is go straight to my authorization of this app. You can authorize it and then it's going to send me back to OpenAI. 
I'm going to make a longer video specifically on authorization uh, and how this actually works, how you need to actually build it. I just want to show this as an example right now that you have the ability to uh, link these things up and then you'll see that fetch and search are actually pulling back. So we'll go through authorization in, in another video, but just wanted to show a preview of that. So back here in our, our template, let's go ahead and get this running on Vercel. So all we really need to do is go up to the top, click this MCP chat with uh, uh, ChatGPT deep research compatibility, and we can actually deploy it. We don't even need to really do uh, anything specific, but if you do want to see the repo, <clears throat> you can come over here and you can actually see the sample code is pretty, uh, pretty simple. You basically have a page and a layout, and then you have your MCP transport router. And inside here, what it's going to do is it's just giving us documents, right? So these documents are going to have some text. It's also going to have a URL of where that resource lives and uh, the simple ability to kind of do a search here. In this case, we're not doing a true semantic search. We're just kind of looking for does this word uh, actually live uh, in this document? So what we're going to do, and then uh, also the fetch, where it's actually going to retrieve the document, and so we can get from a document ID. So we'll want to pay attention to just like doc1. So with that, let's go ahead and deploy this. So if we come here, uh, again, up at the top, this is actually just going to launch me into Vercel, so you'll see it in my environment. It's going to copy the this over. I'm not going to put this as a private repo to me it's just a fork I'm gonna go ahead and create um, I'm using a free account on this uh, and you should be able to to get started with this right away all right so now we're going through our deployment and uh, it's gonna take a second to kind of build through these I'm gonna go ahead and pause all right so now we have this deployed uh, we can continue to the dashboard add any of these things uh, you can also see that it's giving us a preview of what we've got here. So I'm just going to continue, go ahead and launch because I'm going to need that URL, get our domain. We can see it here. Let's go ahead and do slash MCP. And we can see that the get method isn't allowed. So let's, uh, I think I need to sort, maybe it's API. No, okay. So I think this is correct. We're going to run it in our local uh, model uh, context inspector, in our MCP inspector. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and run. Uh, I'm not in Claude code. Let me just clear that up. I'm going to go ahead and run this locally. So I can do an MPX uh, model inspector. We're going to go ahead and run that. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. Also, check out the Vibe Coding Retreat, which is our community. And lastly, I wanted to give a thanks to our sponsor, Apathy, which is a great way to actually scrape and aggregate a bunch of data, which you could actually use in an uh, OpenAI MCP connector. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So now that we have that URL, what we're going to do is we're going to put it into our uh, MCP inspector. We'll add streamable uh, HTTP. Proxy's fine. We don't need any authentication, and we're just going to send this. So when we go ahead and connect locally, we should be able to get our information. We're going to see a list of tools. We have search, fetch, uh, exactly like what we're supposed to see, and then you can see different types of information. So if we did like next.js and ran this tool, we're going to get all the documents that next.js is mentioned. If we do fetch and we do doc1, we're going to see the resource itself and the metadata source associated with it. So this should be enough for us to then connect directly to chat GPT, which is what we will do next looking at their docs. Uh, so if we look back at the documentation, it just says that we need to connect our connectors here on developer mode. And so what we can do is we go back to ChatGPT and we look at settings. That's how I got here. Now, under app and connectors, 
you may have to go to advanced and click on developer mode. So that will give you the little orange border to let you know that you're in developer mode, but it will also let you connect custom connectors. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a uh, new tool and we're just gonna say Next.js docs. Uh, even though this isn't the official Next.js docs, we're gonna take our Vercel deployment of MCP. We don't have authentication on this one and we are going to go ahead and say, I trust this application. That's all you need to do in order to add a connector. And now we click create, and this may take a second. Perfect. We now have our next JS docs research, and we can test this in our window. Uh, we can also test this in what's called the prompts dashboard. So if you go back to the docs and you scroll down, down at the bottom, there is uh, this test and connect your MCP server. You can click this in the prompts dashboard and in your prompt, in, in the platform chat, which is a little bit different, you can actually add an M and test your MCP. So uh, waiting for this to load, we're gonna go ahead and click a create. If you go down here to tools and you go to MCP server, you can click this and it's very, very similar to the connectors, right? So now we have uh, by others, but if we wanna add our own, again, we put in URL, we say our label, uh, we'll say nerding next.js MCP, uh, we'll just say next.js MCP again and I don't have authentication, you all, you'll notice though that this has different types of authentication, right? And so right now, if you're connecting the MCP server through the platform, you get none access token or custom headers. We're gonna go ahead and do a none. On the other one, you might've seen that it said none or OAuth. So if you're doing it in the, uh, the, the traditional chat, like you don't have the option to do um, the, uh, headers just heads up so we're going to go ahead and wait for this to connect and then we'll try it here okay great so now we are in the exact same state if we look at the docs as what we would expect and so you need to select never require approval for this tool so if we go back here it we need to change this and we're going to say never require approval for any tool and now auto selects them you could also turn them off if you want we're gonna go ahead and add this. And uh, now we can actually test our uh, prompt if we want. So again, you can uh, put in any kind of prompt or user messages that you might want. We're just gonna say uh, search for the next JS doc one and that's it. Now we're being pretty specific of what this is, but I kind of just want to see like how the AI is going to actually operate and uh, what tools it's going to be reused. So as you can see, it's pulling back the custom tool that we set over here. It's going to list out these tools and it's got the ability to fetch that document. Uh, and now it's pulling this information back. So it didn't, if you notice, oh, it did do the search. So it did the search of the, the Next.js. So we were able to chain this together. That's exactly what I was hoping for. It listed the tools, it searched specifically, it found the doc uh, and then pulled back the doc ID. We could probably just as easily say, go fetch doc one, but this is a really good example of how this will work in the new prompt dashboard. So really quick, uh, we're gonna try this on the live as well and see how we, if this works uh, similar. Now keep in mind, all these things are in beta, right? So there may be some bugs. So what, we're, what we need to do when we're in de develop mode on our regular chat is we basically need to come down here. You can see more and you should be able to see this next JS docs now that you've created. If you don't click add sources, and then add connect more and you should be able to see it here and then that will enable it so if you but you should be able to see it here 
Now you can actually see that this is the next JS docs. And let's just use the same prompt for uh, consistency. And we'll go ahead and see if this does the same thing. Okay, so it is looking for tools. It's calling to tools. We're not actually, oh, here we go. Perfect. Okay, so in this case, it did the uh, fetch and it just did the fetch. It didn't actually list the tools and search um, as opposed to the other one. That's pretty normal with chat, uh, with AI. It's going to choose its own path. But the reality is, is that it's still going out and catching or and fetching our document. So again, now you have the ability to make an MCP server, pull your for your own documents, and share that with uh, different people in your organization or um, different people that you might be selling prompts to, whatever. Um, and actually share those resources in a in a data connector way that allows you to aggregate different data from different sources and now you have your own custom connector in OpenAI.